What makes Fortnite pro players so good? Obviously, they play a lot of Fortnite, but there's more to being a pro than you think. You see, the pros are doing things that most normal players, including you, aren't doing. And it's their decision to do these things on a consistent basis that helps them reach the highest level. Hi, I'm Cram, and in this video, I'm going to tell you the seven things that Fortnite pro players do that you don't. When you watch this whole video, you'll be able to model what it is the pros are doing so you can improve at Fortnite and get to the next level. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so when I release a new video, you get notified. Now here's the first thing that Fortnite pro players are consistently doing, and it's that they take the time to properly warm up. You know that it's important to warm up, but do you actually take the time to do it? In sports, a warm-up can help to prevent injury and it prepares your body for what you're about to do. Of course, injuries in video games are rare, but they do occasionally happen, so it's important that you take the time to stretch your hands and your wrists before you play. And because stretching can help to improve your range of motion, it could even help you to play better. Now as well as stretching, a good Fortnite warm-up should consist of in-game drills to get you prepared. As you know, Fortnite consists of a few different mechanical skills, like building, editing, and aiming, so your warm-up should look to address these things. For example, you could warm up your building by going into a creative map and doing some drills like 180 degree turns, some tunneling, wall replacements, and 90s. Of course, this isn't an exhaustive list of the type of building you can have in your warm-up, and you should adapt your warm-up drills according to your ability and your goals. But when you take the time to do your warm-up drills before jumping into a game, it's going to help dramatically reduce the number of mistakes you make because you're already warmed up. And as you're doing your building drills, feel free to throw in some edits, and we'll discuss editing in more detail as you continue to watch this video. And as well as your building and editing, you have your aiming mechanics to consider. And that brings us to the second thing the Fortnite pro players are doing, which is training their aim. You know that having good aim is important in Fortnite because it's a shooter game, but just playing Fortnite isn't going to be enough to improve your aim and get it to the level that you want. As you know, Fortnite's a battle royale game, and that means there's a lot of downtime, where you're not fighting enemies, because you spend a lot of your time running around and looting. But when you're not fighting enemies and practicing your aim, you're not improving. Aim trainers are the solution to the problem of downtime. As for specific aim trainers, Kovacs FPS Aim Trainer is the best aim trainer you can use right now, in my opinion, because there are a ton of useful scenarios and a lot of resources for how to improve your aim when using Kovacs. Of course, if you don't want to use an aim trainer like Kovacs for whatever reason, like you play on a console or you don't want to pay the price of it on Steam, then another good option for training your aim is to play Fortnite Creative Aim Maps. And there are a few good reasons to play Fortnite Creative Aim Maps over playing Kovacs. For example, you use the same guns so you can get used to the feel and the bloom of the weapons, you use the same third person perspective and FOV so you train your third person intuition better, and you use the same movements as Fortnite so you can train your ability to move and dodge properly. So what's better for training your aim? Aim trainers or aim maps in Fortnite Creative? The truth is that it really doesn't matter. You just need to dedicate some time to training your aim if you want better aim. And how often should you train your aim? I recommend training every day, because consistent practice on a daily basis beats inconsistent practice every time. And I suggest that you train your aim for about 30 minutes a day, but as little as 10 minutes a day can be effective. Of course, you can train your aim for longer if you have the time and you think you'll benefit from the additional time spent training your aim. And as for when to do your aim training, you can do it before playing your main games as a part of your warm up, like we discussed at the start of the video. So, when you're ready to drop into a real game of Fortnite, your aim is already warmed up and ready to go. Look, aim trainers haven't been around for very long, and they're only just starting to see mainstream use. So, we're going to see the aim of players drastically improve as a result. 
The best aimer is probably going to be some young and dedicated player that's invested many hours into training their aim. Why can't this be you? Of course, having good aim is an important part of becoming a Fortnite pro, but there's more to Fortnite than just good aim. And this brings us on to the third things that pro players are doing, and it's that they practice building and editing. So similar to training your aim, you have to dedicate time to practicing your building and editing. As you know, building and editing are unique to Fortnite, and they're the component of the game that makes it have such a high skill gap and infinite skill ceiling. And even if you don't have the best aim, you can still outplay your enemies and win games with superior building and editing. Of course, it's better to have top tier aim, building and editing so that you're a complete Fortnite player, and that's why you should both train your aim and your building. So how does training your building and editing differ to warming up your building that we discussed at the start? Well, when you warm up, you should be doing drills that you're already familiar with. But when you're training, you should be doing things that you have not yet perfected and practicing builds that you're not familiar with. As for how to practice your building and editing, you have a few options. You can play Fortnite creative courses that are designed to test your building and editing skills in a variety of different ways. This is really useful because you can time how long it takes you to complete this course, and then you have a benchmark so you have something to measure your progress against. Another option you have is to just go into a blank creative map and free build. Go and have some fun. Practice all sorts of building patterns and high ground retakes until you feel confident that you can pull them off consistently. Practicing difficult building sequences is a great way to improve your building, but it doesn't mean anything if you don't do them in a real game. Look, anyone can pull off a difficult high ground retake in a low pressure environment, like a blank creative map by yourself. But it's another thing to actually do them in game when you're against another player and you're under pressure and you risk dying. You know that Fortnite's a PvP or player versus player game and being an expert at building and editing and clicking on things in an aim trainer or creative map will only get you so far. So you've got to learn to be able to play against real opponents. And that brings us to the fourth thing that Fortnite pro players are doing, and it's playing 1v1s and box fights. We've already discussed the problem of downtime in Fortnite, in that you only spend a small amount of your time in the game actually fighting against enemies. This isn't good, because fighting against enemies is the number one thing that you should want to improve at since Fortnite's a PvP game. You know you can use aim trainers and building and editing practice to isolate those particular mechanics and improve at them. But what about the actual fighting? How can you quickly get good at fighting real enemies? This is where 1v1 maps and duel maps and box fighting maps are your best friend. Aim dueling maps allow you to 1v1 against a player with a high amount of hit points and infinite ammo. Aim dueling maps are a great way to practice your aim while learning to dodge and move properly. Box fighting maps are amazing too, since box fights are a huge part of the Fortnite meta and will likely always be a part of the meta, becoming an expert at box fighting is essential. Also, you can grab a friend and just jump into Fortnite Creative and start fighting each other. As you fight each other, you'll soon learn that you've spent more time fighting in 30 minutes than you would have in several hours of playing the usual battle royale mode in Fortnite. And if you don't have anyone to play with, don't worry, the Fortnite community is huge and it's easy to find new players. For example, you can find players using the looking for group section of Fortnite Tracker, and this is good because you can compare your stats, or you can join a Discord server like the FNPL. But listen, it's important that you look to play against someone that's slightly better than you. You don't want to play against someone that you can consistently beat with ease. Sure, this might be good for your ego, but not good for actually improving and getting better. When pro players play 1v1s and duels, they're playing against other pros, so they're constantly being challenged and pushed to get better. So find someone that can beat you as much as you can tolerate, because when you play against someone that's better than you, they force you to raise your standards so you can learn and improve faster. And talking about learning and improving faster, here's the fifth thing the pro players are doing that allows them to do exactly that, and it's they do VOD reviews of their own gameplay. 
Listen, reviewing your replays is one of the most effective ways to identify your mistakes so you can fix them and improve. Yet, almost no one takes the time to review their VODs. Why? Well, it's certainly not because it's too difficult or inaccessible. As you know, Fortnite has a built-in replay system that records your gameplay. Also, recording software such as OBS is free and easy to use. But whichever method you choose, as you watch your replays back, you want to take some notes. You can use a word processor or something like Notepad for this, or you could even go old school and just use a pen and paper. What you want to do is write down three mistakes that you've made and then think about how you can correct that mistake in the future and write that down as well. Writing things down is really important because it will help you commit things to your memory so you'll be able to remember it better and actually take the action to correct it. But as well as just writing down your mistakes, you should write down the three things that you did well. This is an important part of the process because it allows you to reflect on not only the things that you've done wrong, but what you're doing right as well. Of course, you can write more than three things, but I find three is a good number because any more can become overwhelming and difficult. And you don't have to just watch your own replays either. Look, Fortnite automatically records and uploads VODs of tournaments within the in-game client. So you can watch and see what the very best players are doing when they're in a game against top competition. And there are plenty of YouTube channels that focus on doing VOD reviews of the best players. For example, BallerTW and I'm Speedy Gonzalez. You can learn a lot from watching the videos on their channel when they review other pro players. As for how often you should be VOD reviewing, I find the 80-20 rule works well here. So 80% of your time should be spent playing and training and so on, and the other 20% VOD reviewing and reflecting on your gameplay. VOD reviews aren't the most exciting part about Fortnite, but they're mandatory for anyone that wants to get better, so just go and do it. Now here's the sixth thing the Fortnite pros are doing, is that they get coaches. Getting a coach for a video game may seem silly, but it's what a bunch of the best Fortnite players are doing because they know how useful it is. You see, coaching is an investment in yourself. A good coach will help you find out what you're doing wrong and how you can correct it. Your coach should help you to organize your training so that it's efficient and properly aligned with your goals. But you shouldn't just get any coach because not all coaches are created equal. You wanna talk with a coach beforehand to make sure that you're a good fit for each other and that you're confident in your coach and that he'll make a positive difference in your gameplay. Don't just get a coach that's going to give you generic advice that you could get for free and a copy and paste program. Those coaches are just out to take your money. Now, do you need a coach to become a Fortnite pro? Of course not. You can get to the highest level all by yourself. With that being said though, Getting a good coach can dramatically increase your chances of becoming a pro player and accelerate the time that it will take you to get there. But remember, your coach is only able to do so much for you, even the best coach. A coach can give you the guidance and tools that you need to improve, but it's your responsibility to actually put the things into practice. And now we're on to the seventh and final thing the Fortnite pro players are doing, and it's that they work on their mental game. Look, you can work on improving your mechanical skills as much as you want, but if you have not got your mind in order, you're not going to be able to get to where you want to go. Your mental strength in Fortnite is arguably the most important thing to determining your success. You see, you've got to have a clear purpose, a clear goal or an aim, so you can know where you're supposed to be going. Without this, then you could just be wasting your time. Of course, your mental game is more than just setting goals. It means focusing on your health as well. It means sleeping and eating well. Professional gamers are even starting to work on their physical conditioning. You see, if your body is weak and slow and out of shape, then guess how you're going to play. You're going to be slow and not as good as you could be. Of course, there are very skilled players that aren't in the best of shape. But I don't think that the best Fortnite player is ever going to be someone that's completely out of shape because it's just not possible. And as Fortnite continues to grow and the competition gets more difficult, then it's going to become more and more important that you're in peak mental and physical condition to succeed. Listen, Fortnite pro players have a particular way of communicating with themselves. For example, 
Mongral is one of the best Fortnite players in the world, and if you watch his gameplay, then you'll often notice that he'll say that he's the best player in the world. Now, saying your best doesn't make it true, of course, but it will make it more likely to happen than if you were to use the opposite words. You see, the words that you use to describe yourself have the ability to empower you if you use them correctly, but if you use them incorrectly, words have the power to destroy you. If someone continually describes themselves as weak and pathetic, then what do you think is going to happen? They're going to feel those things. But what if instead, you use words like amazing, spectacular, motivated, and energized in your vocabulary? Would that change how you feel? Of course it would. I have a friend that I sometimes play with, and he constantly says things like, I'm so bad, I'm playing terribly, I have the worst aim. Do you think saying that is helpful? If you're in a negative state, then you've got to find a way to break the pattern. Something you can try is what Tfue uses. When Tfue dies, he usually says that he was unlucky or unfortunate. This helps to break the negative cycle so he can stay in a positive state and continue to perform at his best. So to conclude, just loading up your machine to play Fortnite without a clear goal in mind is a waste of time and pro players are always making sure to organize their practice in a way that's meaningful to them so they have a clear idea of what they're doing to achieve their goals. You see, the decisions that you make every day will guide you in your journey to becoming a pro player. And the most important thing that you must learn to develop is persistence, because if you're not doing the right things and persist to do them, then you stand no chance of becoming a pro player. But when you do the right things, and you get yourself into the right state, then there is no limits to what you can achieve. Here's a quick recap of what the pro players are doing. They warm up properly so they are in the right frame before playing. They practice the important things they are going to have the best carryover to their gameplay, like building, editing, and aiming. They review their gameplay to find the mistakes, correct them, and continually improve. They get themselves into peak physical and mental condition so they can game at their highest level, and they hire coaches to help them take their gameplay to the next level. I hope you found this video helpful, and it's given you some extra guidance and direction as to what you can do to grow and improve as a player. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel because it really helps me grow. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching, and have an amazing day. Peace.